with this uh, uh, we move to the next speaker dr shishir kumar shandilya associate professor school of data science and forecasting devi ahilya university indore i will again request all the speakers kindly uh, keep your presentation or address within 7 to 8 minutes because you are running short of time thank you so much a very good afternoon to all of you and thanks apac and the mentors for inviting the the very important but yet uh people take it for granted the academic institution of the cyber security ecosystem so i think uh, this is uh uh the the presentation which is more uh towards uh before the startups before the uh the incidences of cyber security we'll be talking more when uh, we are training the students what students are doing and what potential they are having so uh, i myself is right now affiliated to devi hilya university which is a state government university at indore and prior to this i was working with velour institute of technology and i'm also visiting liverpool hope university so uh, what all i'm going to present today here is uh, the work of you know the students of all the three uh, universities as well next slide please so uh, i think in the inauguration session uh, shri amit sharma ji is uh, quoted very well that everybody is talking about cyber security everybody is talking about incident responses privacy and everything this is current uh, systems right but when the quantum computers will come the the scenario will get changed and people need to uh, talk more about it being from an academic and research institution it is our moral responsibility to think futuristic and uh, therefore uh, i'm just restricting myself to this particular topic about the cyber resilience which the companies are doing right now the startups the organization everybody is talking about this one but i'll be specifically talking about what will happen when the quantum computers will be in the hands of uh, you know common people so uh, what would be the scenario next slide please so uh, i'll try to correlate with the business continuity model i'm not going to go deep with it uh, this is just a, a a small screenshot of a website of a uk hospital they are just mentioning that they just ran uh, an, a major incident and all the appointments are blocked uh, so being uh, if you belong to a company or an organization this you never want to uh, post on your website that you are you know in between a cyber uh, incident and you are not able to serve the people so business continuity basically talks about that that even in case of any cyber attack even in case of any bad thing happen in your organization you need to continue you need to run the show next slide please and therefore uh, the changing paradigm i'll just quickly uh, brief about it that uh, mere investment in the cyber security mere purchasing good softwares talking more about uh, uh, the products that will not solve the purpose it is basically we need to inculcate this thing in the culture of the our, our employees our clients even the supply chain management uh, people all the third party vendors everybody who is involved with us in the business so uh, this is uh, one uh, big thing and second that are we ready are we uh, good enough to go for the adaptive change when the quantum computers will come how our organizations will behave and with the present resources and the systems how we are going to uh, cater with that next slide so what could be the solution so this is more i'm i'm more focusing on that uh, at vit dvla university and liverpool hope university the all three universities uh, i represent here uh, are talking specifically on the solution the adaptive solution which are futuristic in the cyber security that doesn't mean that these systems these solutions are not uh, executable right now yeah they are completely capable to handle current situation as well but we are focusing because we are developing we are doing the research we will be more focusing on the future not on the current session but that doesn't mean that it is not applicable to the current situation as well next slide so these are some of the common characteristics of the probable solution whatever prob uh, probable solution you may think of that should be able to learn by itself in a real time so this ai is already doing we are doing it but how to keep that knowledge and how to keep that knowledge to use when a very unusual situation will come so that is very very important then it should also detect and respond to the various type of threats so it is not only like we talk about the anti malware system we talk about anti ransomware but it should be a more comprehensive solution it should at least give response to almost all varieties of the solution then it should be scalable adaptive and it should also be able to deploy it on the premises and the cloud as well next slide 
So uh, I'm here talking about nature-inspired cybersecurity. I can very proudly, uh, I can say that uh, this is the technology which India is actually leading here. We do have the highest number of uh, citation here uh, on this particular topic that talks about uh, Scopus. And uh, uh, the universities are, uh, you know, the top ranked universities and we are working on it. Let me just uh, quickly go through about, uh, about this technology. The nature inspired computing is not new. People have, researchers have amalgamated this technology into multiple things. Let it be a design of a helicopter, of a building, of a train. People talked about nature inspired computing a lot. But we actually amalgamated the nature inspired computing in the cybersecurity domain. Next slide, please. Yeah. So interestingly, why we have amalgamated it? Because the nature inspired computing is fundamentally tolerant to the incompleteness of the information. So we are talking about cryptography. We are talking about, let it be any security algorithms. They need data to work on it, right? What if the data is incomplete? What if the data is, uh, you know, somewhat superficial? then they'll not be able to work on it properly as we actually want. So Nature Inspired Cybersecurity talks about that even in case of incomplete data, wherever the incompleteness can be uh, defined separately case to case, but it will be always, the defensive algorithm will always able to run. Next slide. And one more important thing, I'm just co going to correlate it with this thing, the cyber immunity, which is very, very, uh, you know, hot topic nowadays on internet. Uh, there are two different definition of uh, cyber immunity. I will just quickly go through it. The first one is cyber immunity, you can correlate with the COVID vaccine. So you'll be going to give a very latent uh, virus into the system. The system defense, uh, the defense system of your body will actually able to train itself. And then if the similar kind of another virus will come, you will try to act upon it. So this is the first type of cyber immunity which can be easily possible nowadays. Uh, we can we can do it very easily and we can train the AI system, we can have the machine learning algorithms to achieve the cyber in, this definition of cyber immunity. Next. The next cyber immunity talks entirely different. These are two contradictory definitions you will find in on internet when you search it. This definition actually backed up by a very uh, known organization called Casper Sky. They talked about that, okay, don't do something about the defensive thing. Let's make the entire scenario reverse. For an example, if somebody wants to steal 100 rupees from your pocket, and to do this, if he will need to spend 1,000 rupees, he is not going to do it. So he is going to create a scenario, such a scenario that the attacking would be more and more expensive. Now, here expensive means the computing power, it could be uh, money, it could be, you know, multiple other ways. Next slide. So I'm just quickly run over these slides. Next slide, please. So this is one of the recent work. So now I'm quickly talking about the work of my students. Uh, this is the, the first work which I have talked about the nature inspired cyber security. So here what we did, we got an Indian patent and this, uh, uh, the, the inventors were with the uh, UK university as well. And what we did here that we actually created a device, a hardware device for pen drives. So I will not talk more about the malicious pen drive and the rubby ducky and the other things. But what we did that we actually created a hardware device for uh, this particular thing. Now what this hardware device will, will do. Next slide please. You click on this working demonstration. How are the mouse? Backslide. Working demonstration, jahan likha, uspe click, uspe hover karo, mouse pe. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not able to. Shubham, can you help? So what we did that uh, malicious pen drive, any, any kind of software, it actually works on the architecture of a system. It should be a MacBook, it should be a, a operating system. They need some information. What this particular device is doing, it is actually camouflaging that particular thing. So they are not only encrypting the things, they are also camouflaging the entire architecture, the hardware and the software architecture of it. So obviously the utilization of the uh, of this particular thing, you may say that why I will ca carry a pen drive and then I will also carry this particular invented device as well. Eventually what we'll do, we will when it will it will be on the industrialization phase, it will be coming along with the port itself. So the USB port itself will be going to have this particular chipset. Okay, we can shift it. 
Next. So this is one of the uh, test case system of NIXES, the nature inspired cyber security, what we have done. So we have, we have tested this particular system and this test bed is already available, freely available. So anybody who want to work on nature inspired cyber security can download this test bed system. So their focus should be more on this research of NICS, not on establishing the network, a different type of network. Next slide. Uh, this is, uh, these are some of the results, how we can uh, correlate the results. Next slide. And this particular data set, uh, again, probably I can say that it, it uh, published in the IEEE standard data set uh, for this particular attack evaluation in the system. Next. Uh, next work is talking about the Firefly optimization. Firefly is an insect which actually attracts towards the light, towards the luminance. Jugnu bolte hindi mein. So what we did, next slide. What we did, we actually, now this is, uh, you know, the POC, the proof of concept. We don't have any patent on it, but uh, uh, what we have done, we will visualize the entire network. Let it be any network, let it be cloud, let it be any kind of network in the different set of nodes of having equidistance. Now here, depending on the PDR, the packet delivery ratio, end-to-end -end delay or the throughput, we'll be trying to identify the malicious node, the node from where the attack is basically started. Again, next slide. Next slide, please. So you can see that the yellow dots are the fireflies. They are the small subroutines in your network. Obviously, that will create some a very small amount of latency in the network, but it will actually give you a pre Precautionary measures, like if you are having an IDS or IPS system installed in your system, it will be a early detection of those malicious nodes so that they can actually have the observation. Next slide. I have a video, but it will not work. Next slide. Next slide, please. And uh, now I'm talking, I'll be just quickly going through with, uh, you know, different, different projects so that I can sum up later. Uh, uh, Dr. Shiram has uh, mentioned rightly about, uh, uh, about the startups. Right, so this is something what uh, Dr. Shiram uh, came to VIT, I think two years back, and he initiated, uh, you know, he gave us some ideas. And this is the outproduct of it. We are going to take it, uh, you know, to him again for the startup. This is an operating system, an entire completely comprehensive operating system, sir, built in MP. And this is basically for the children, for teenagers. So post COVID, what happened? We need to give our mobile phones, laptops to our kids, especially uh, the teenagers. There are multiple issues. Cyber bullying is happening. There are multiple other things. Now you can also see the, uh, the YouTube ads. They are also not appropriate. If you, if you see the YouTube ads, which are coming uh, automatically, they might not be appropriate for the, um, for the children. So this entire operating system, initially we thought of doing it through application. There are various applications available in the market, but then we thought of that application can be hacked, can be tweaked, can be closed, can be terminated. Then what we did, we created an entire Linux distribution. So this is a Linux distribution, but it is fully functional. You can also download it. It is already available on internet. Next slide. Uh, the, uh, the next one is the MVPS drones, uh, the drones which are hybrid, which can, uh, you know, uh, uh, work efficiently in air and water and uh, there are drones which are working fine in air and fine in water but when the transition happened from air to uh, water and from water to air there are some problems so this is one of the, the we are applying for a design patent or a different type of wings here and again the video will not play i believe can you can you play it hover the mouse that's not okay. Okay, next slide. Yes, yes, one minute. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. So in conclusion, uh, talk about Google, Facebook, Snapchat, Reddit. They all were student projects. Before startup, they were projects. And here, what, what as an investor of my students, of academic institution, what point I want to make here is that we should also keep a very close eye on these projects. See, a very good project may not go to startup, right? So we need to have, that will not cost much money. It will just cost, you know, a few review, your time for review, reviewing it. And uh, I think uh, there, there are already some association we have with the SAI and the other uh, people. But what point I just wanted to make here is just keep an eye, like if you're, wherever your organization is located, 
go and visit the academic institution see what projects they are doing the mp police is doing a wonderful job they are providing the student internship program um, all over the mp and we are probably we happen to be it's, it's too early to say we, probably we are going to be the nodal center for it and what our objective is just to find out that what projects which are which are actually having potential to have a good startup next slide please okay so that's my name and uh, uh, the email address if you have something something which connects to you i'll connect the respective student i mentioned the student name as well thank you thanks uh, dr uh, shishir kumar uh, shandilya from devi ahila university indore